Okay, so what we want to do is we want to hook up a motor and we've got a magnetic motor starter here and we need to figure out how to size the wire properly, how to size the thermal overloads properly to protect the windings of the motor and to size the overcurrent protection device, the fuses or the circuit breaker, in this case fuses, how to size those properly for this size of motor. Okay, so what we've got here is a one-third horsepower, three-phase motor. And it has a service factor of 1.35. Notice that the voltage is 200 to 230 volt slash 460 volt. And this motor is set up for low voltage connection and high voltage connection. So we need to figure out the amperage. The amperage is 1.4 to 1.6 slash 0.8. 1 1.4 for 200 volt, 1.6 for 230 volt, and 0.8 for 460 volt. So we need to figure out how do we size the wire for this motor. Okay, so we're looking at the National Electric Code in Article 430, Motors, Motor Circuits, and Controllers. And we're at table 43250 for full load current three phase AC motors. And we're trying to find the amperage for a one third horsepower motor, three phase. So we've got one half, three quarters, one horsepower, one and a half, but I don't see a one third horsepower. If I take the one horsepower and divide it by three, that's one third horsepower. So I find the 208 volts for one amp was 4.6. 4.6 divided by three is 1.533, which is right in between the 1.4 and the 1.6 amps that we had on the motor. If you remember, the 200 volt was 1.4, the 230 volt was 1.6. So the 208 volt being between 200 and 230, and the 1.533 being between the 1.4 and the 1.6. So we have an amperage of 1.533 to size the wire size and the overcurrent protection device or the fuses. We'll use the nameplate rating of 1.5 to size the thermal overloads. All right, so here we have a magnetic motor starter, uh, General Electric, and we'll see lines one, line two, line three. That's where the wires are coming in to feed the fuses that go down through the wires to the contactor. Here's the coil for the contactor, and here down below is the, where the thermal overloads go and then these terminals down below are the, where we hook up the motor. So we need to size the fuses, and we need to size the thermal overloads, and we also need to size the wire that feeds us. Okay, so we are sizing the fuses, and we're sizing the thermal overloads. The thermal overloads that go in this unit are like the, these are the CR220s or whatever that sizing for this one-third horsepower motor. The thermal overloads go into this section of the contactor block down here. These screws will come out and then they will secure the thermal overloads in there. The fuses go into this section of the mag starter up here. And so we need to size the right size fuses for the one-third horsepower motor and size the thermal overloads. If you'll notice, you'll, this is the lid of the mag starter. And this chart here gives us the heaters for the fusible controllers. The heaters or the thermal overloads are sized according to this. So here's the single phase and here's the three phase. And we've got 1.5 amps for the thermal overloads. And so it tells us that we can use the C220, C239s, Etc. according to this chart that's on the mag starter, the right type of thermal overloads that are going to go into the contactor block. Okay, so we want to size the wire, the thermal overloads, and the overcurrent protection device, which will be fuses, for a one-third horsepower three-phase motor. Has a nameplate voltage of 200 to 230 volts, 
to 460 volts. It has a nameplate full load current amperage of 1.46 to 1.4 to 1.6 amps, and it has a service factor of 1.35, which is going to play a role in figuring out the size of the thermal overloads. Now, according to 430.22 of the code book, 430.22 tells me for a single motor, I need to take the amperage that I get from the tables in the back of the article, tables 432.48 for single phase, table 432.50 for the three phase, that I need to take those amperages from those tables for the motor that I've got to take that amperage times 125%. So when we went to the table, we had a one half horsepower, a three quarter horsepower, a one horsepower, but we didn't have the one third horsepower. So what I did was I divided the one horsepower by three and got one third horsepower. When I found the amperage in the table 432.50 for the one horsepower motor, it was for the 208 volt, it was 4.6. We divided to 4.6 by 3 and got 1.533 amps. So the tables say it's 1.53 amps. So I need to take that 1.53 amps and I need to multiply that by 1.25. And I come up with a value should be about 1.75 or something like that. 1.53 times 1.25. And I got 1.9125. 1.9125 amps. So I've almost got two amps. So when I go to table 31015B16, I need to know which column to use. Article 11014C1 says for terminations in a mag starter, disconnect or whatever, that if it's not listed, I have to use the 60 degree C column for anything 100 amps or less. Well, 1.9125 is less than 100 amps. And so I'm going to use the 60 degree C column or the first column in table 31015B16 to size the wire. A 14 gauge wire is generally the smallest wire that we're going to use out in the electrical field. We're going to use smaller wire for motor controls, etc. But generally for wiring anything in the electrical field, we're going to use the 14 gauge wire. 14 gauge wire is good up to 15 amps, so it will handle the 1.9125 amps. So we're going to use 14 gauge wire for this motor install according to 430.22. We want to size the thermal overloads. In 430.32 A1 and C for the selection of the overloads, it tells me that I have to use the nameplate amperage. I have to use the nameplate amperage, not the amperage from the tables, but the nameplate amperage to protect the windings in the motor. The nameplate amperage for this motor, 208 is between 200 and 230. We had 1.4 and 1.6. 1.4 for 200, 1.6 for 230. Our calculation was 1.5. 208 volts is right in between 200 and 230. 1.5 amps is right in between 1.4 and 1.6. So we're going to say that the nameplate amperage is 1.5 amps. According to 43032A1 and C, for the minimum and maximum size of the thermal thermal overloads, excuse me, that the, we take the nameplate amperage of 1.5 amps, and it says in 43032A1 that contingent upon the service factor being 1.15 or greater, or the temperature being 40 degrees C or less, that we can multiply that nameplate amperage times 1.25. All other motors at around 115% or 1.15. Well, our service factor on our motor 
when we look at the nameplate downstairs, was 1.35. So it's greater than 1.15 for the service factor. Service factor is basically a rating of the bindings of the motor to handle 135% of whatever the load is. If it's just a service factor of one, then it's only good for basically the amperage that it's rated at. But because it's rated at a service factor 1.35, it would be the 1.5 amps times 1.35, so it would be good up to 2 amps. So it just handles more of the load with the higher the service factor. So when we're putting the thermal overloads in, the service factors 1.15 or greater, 1.35, so we can multiply that nameplate full load current by 125%. So 1.5 times 1.25 gives us a value of 1.875 amps for the minimum size for our thermal overloads. 43032C is saying if the Overloads that are calculated in A1 aren't sufficient enough to carry the load that we can, if it has a service factor of 1.15 greater or 40 degrees C or less, that we can multiply that value times 1.4 or 140%. If all other motors, if it doesn't have a service factor 1.15 or greater or 40 degrees C or less, then all other motors are at 130% or 1.3. So I can take that 1.5 and multiply that by 1.4, and I get a value of 2.1. So the minimum size thermal overload was 1.875. The maximum size thermal overload was 2.1 amps. And we can find the type of thermal overload that we're going to use for the mag starter that we're using on that chart that was on the front cover of the mag starter. So we need to size the fuses or the circuit breakers for that. So we're going to go to table 43052 and take into consideration exception number one. When we look at table 43052, there's going to be non-time delay fuses, dual element time delay fuses, time inverse breakers, and instantaneous strip breakers or the fuses. So for the fuses, for the types of motors on the left hand side it says single phase, poly phase, or many phase, or the three phase you can call it. There's long rotor motors, there's synchronous motors, there's the DC motors. So we find the correct type of motor that we have and we go over to the correct column for the, non or the dual element time delay fuse and we find out what the amperage would be the percentage that we're going to multiply that amperage by. So, table 43052 says for polyphase motors or three-phase motors that the time delay, dual element time delay fuse is at 175% of the amperage that we got from the tables 43250 or 248. 43252 175% of that amperage. We had an amperage of 1.53 from those tables. So 1.53 times 1.75 gives me a value of 2.6775, 2.7 amps. Now, in the exception number one, it reads that if there isn't a standard size fuse from that calculation, that we can go to the next higher standard size fuse. Well, what are those? If we go to 240.6 in the code book for overcurrent protection devices, we can find a table that will tell us the standard size fuses. It'd be 15 amp, 20 amp, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, then to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 125, 150, 175, 200. So there's a table that tells us the standard size fuses. It also says in the text of the, of the table there, 240.6, there are additional size fuses or overcurrent protection devices, one 
3, 6, 10, and 601 amp. 1, 3, 6, 10. So 3 amp is a standard size. The calculation was 2.7, 2.6775 amps. The next higher standard size is 3 amps. So we would use a standard 3 amp fuse for our overcurrent protection. There is an exception number 2. Exception number 2 says that if that isn't sufficient enough, then you can multiply that by 225%. So 1.533 times 2.25 equals 3.44. We're still stuck with the 3 amp because the next higher standard size is 6 and it says in no case shall it exceed that value. So we're stuck with the 3 amp fuse. We need to find out why it's tripping the fuse if, if, if it is. That 3 amp should be sufficient. So. We basically cover sizing the wire, thermal overs, and the overcurrent protection device. If you can remember that in Article 430, Article 430, 22, 32, 52, that that will help you size the wire, thermal overload, and the overcurrent protection device. Remembering that you use the nameplate amperage, use the nameplate full load current for the thermal overloads. You use the tables, 430, 250, or 248, for sizing the wire and the overcurrent protection device. Overcurrent protection device protects the wire. We get that amperage from the tables. The thermal overloads protect the windings of the motor, and we get that amperage from the nameplate on the motor.